One of the trickiest things in video is color correction. It seems like a mystical art form that's only reserved for a secret cabal of video alchemists. So most people don't even bother. But that doesn't mean it's not still a problem. If, if you don't look like a human in your own videos, that's how you come across. And if you can't tell that you aren't coming across human, that's even worse. But it's always been really hard to work out. Here's the problem. Phones and cameras may be smart, but their sensors see faces differently than our eyes. They, they can't compensate for, uh, for example, indoor white balancing when you're outside or vice versa. So we can end up looking too blue or too red or even too green if we're using green screen. Just nothing like what people see when they're actually with you. Video needs to be able to reproduce that sensory experience. But again, it is so hard to see. Your eyes tend to normalize whatever you've shot. So you can edit a whole video without ever realizing your color is way off. In green screen, this is doubly difficult because of how it can interact with you know regular color correction tools. But now there's a simple process to get it right. It's almost a hack. And it works with non-green screen videos too. In fact, it's twice as easy. The really great thing is that from today forward, you'll be able to see what properly color corrected faces look like because you'll be the one making them. A few years ago, I published this training video that I made for green screen, but I had no way of doing color correction. It just wasn't on my radar, and it's got problems. My face and hair are kind of reddish. There was a lot of green spill at the time, and I didn't have very sophisticated keying tools, and I was using a, a pretty basic camera. The background is not blurred properly. I, I would never do it like that today. Fortunately, we can learn from our mistakes. See if this solution agrees with you. Here's the raw footage for today. Face is a bit yellowish. Hair might have a tiny bit of green cast to it, but nothing too terrible. We'll assume you shot your footage, your footage at least this well. If you need a brush up on that, just click below for all the details on shooting awesome green screen in a small room. Okay, now, here's the effect we're going for. Face is a more natural color. Hair doesn't have any green in it, and the background is only partially blurred, so the whole effect is more like real life, and yet with a touch of heightened reality. So in other words, it's good enough. The question is, how do we get there? We're going to do this by the numbers, with two scopes that are built into every major editing program, the waveform monitor and the vector scope. The procedure itself is very basic. Just, just relax, take your time, and it will all unfold pretty easily. Now, I'm using Final Cut Pro, but any capable editing program will allow you to get nearly perfect results. First thing is to open up your waveform monitor. This is what shows you how bright your image is going to be interpreted online. You see, YouTube, Vimeo, really any video hosting site is going to change the color space of your video. And it always ends up looking slightly darker. Even though if you download it from the video hosting site and look at it on your waveform monitor, it will register at the same level you created it because it will have been turned back into the file in that old color space, you know, the one that you created it in before. So you can't totally trust your eye here. Color correction for video is like flying IFR. You can't see anything in the clouds, so you have to trust your instruments or you end up in a graveyard spiral. In video, it's just your hopes and dreams that might auger in. So we use the waveform monitor to measure the brightness of the picture. That brightness is measured in IRE units. IRE stands for International Radio Engineers, and an IRE unit is a measurement of voltage. Zero would be 0% zero voltage and a black picture, while 100 IREs would be 100% voltage and a completely overexposed white picture. For different people, 
we want those IRE values to fall in a certain range. For a male Caucasian face, for example, that number should be from 45 to 65 percent. By the way, I'm indebted to Larry Jordan for these numbers. I'll link you to an article on this so you can find the numbers for your gender and, ethnic and ethnicity. Now, we can see a lot of confusing data on the screen that we don't have to worry about when we're adjusting faces. We sure don't want to have to guess how the changes we're making to the picture are affecting the exposure. So, we'll turn off the background, then crop out everything that isn't a face. Now we can see that the highest highlight in the face is registering at 44 IRE units. You could say this is close, but it's just under the low end and YouTube is gonna make it look a little darker anyway, so I'd like to get it to touch the 50 IRE line. You'll be surprised at how much that changes the look. So, we go to whatever our editing program gives us to change color with, We'll use the color board in Final Cut. We're only going to raise the midtones and the highlights. We don't want to raise the shadow re readings because that will make our whole picture look really weird, almost ghostly. So let's take everything back to center and we'll start by raising the gain on the midtones to 10%. That gets us to an IRE of 47. Now, let's raise the highlights by 10%. That gets us to 48 or 49. Almost there. Let's just add another three points to each one. And that gets us to 50, 51%, which is perfect. And we're done with stage one. Now, we open up the vector scope. Its job is to tell us about the colors we're dealing with. To do that, it has six little indicators for the three primary video colors, red, magenta, and blue, and the three secondary colors, cyan, green, and yellow. But here's what we're gonna be looking at, the magic line. It's called the skin tone indicator at about the 11 o'clock position. It works for every human being because the blood flowing underneath our skin gives everyone the same undertones, no matter how light or dark their pigmentation. So all you have to do is adjust your color until it lays directly on that line, or up to two degrees above it. So how are we gonna, how are we gonna get our color to do that? Well, you could grab the color correction tool that comes with your editing program, select the global control, and just move it around until the color line sits on the middle of the indicator line. Now, I've tried using this method, but I've never been really happy with the result. It takes a long time every time, and for me, it's just not worth the trouble anymore. That's why these days I use a plugin called CinemaGrade that greatly simplifies this whole process. It works on Mac and PC and with Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. More importantly, I get a good result in just a few seconds. So, Let's open up CinemaGrade, choose Color Tint Adjustment, and pull it up and down until the color is sitting directly on the skin tone indicator line. basically done now except for keying in our background. Now, this is important. You'll want to stack your effects with Cinema Grade on top, then the keyer, then the color tool. Otherwise, the plugins could start conflicting with each other. So, let's remove the cropping and do our key. I use Hawaii Keyer 5.0. It works in Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and After Effects, but, but only on the Mac. 
on Windows, the best keyer right now in terms of bang for the buck is probably HitFilm. And that pro feature is free. So we turn on the keyer and now we can see that we've introduced a little bit of green in the hair. So we go to the despill section and pull down the balance just until the green goes away. And that's it. After a while, you'll start seeing how things are going to start looking just right on the scopes. Even without the numbers, you will have trained your eyes. And that's a huge, huge skill in video. It's, it's one of the things that takes you from conscious competence to unconscious competence and makes your work faster, more accurate, and more efficient, and way more fun. Best of all, the relationship you enjoy with your audience will feel more authentic to them and pleasing to the senses. And you don't have to be using green screen to make this work. It's, it's actually easier without it because you don't have to you know, check your keying program against your color correction tools. But I do like green screen. It feels like I'm you know, sort of feng shuiing the room to make my guest feel at home. And by the way, if you have a color correction process that works for you or questions about this one, let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to take your green screen knowledge to the next level, those details are available at the link below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Visible Authority.